Welcome to Little Lectures, making learning and teaching easy for residents and students on the go. Join our residents from the University of Louisville as they share the highest yield internal medicine topics in digestible chunks. Hello, my name is Jordan Berlin. I am a third year resident at University of Louisville Hospital and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about lower GI bleeds. This is uh, the second part of a two-part series on uh, GI bleeds. So in talking about lower GI bleeds, it's good to characterize the location. So differentiating between an upper and lower GI bleed. Anatomically, we use the ligament of trites as our cutoff for lower versus upper GI bleeds. Anything below this is a lower GI bleed. Some of the things that you're gonna encounter when you have a lower GI bleed is either hematochesia or melana. Melana, you usually associate with a upper GI bleed, but if this is a GI bleed from, say, the small intestine rather than the colon, you can oftentimes see melana. Most of these patients, though, you're going to see hematochesia uh, as the presenting uh, GI bleed. It's important to get a good history on these patients. Uh, any history of GI bleeds in the past, lower GI bleeds, any history of upper GI bleeds in the past to kind of characterize and tell you the importance or where to start looking. You want to also know if these patients have had any diverticular disease, any history of hemorrhoids, uh, any NSAID use, and any physical exam or kind of problems that they've personally encountered, say if they've noticed that they're fatigued or that they noticed paleness recently. The other thing is to note the quantity and how often they're having the GI bleeds. Is this a, an acute event that they've just noticed today, it's just started, or has this been a chronic issue and uh, the amount that they're noticing and the quality of the bleed. On physical exam, the things that you're going to want to look for are pallor, uh, you're going to want to look at the vitals to look for tachycardia or hypotension, which would make you a little bit more worried and concerned, and it should be obvious that you should do a digital rectal exam on these patients. And the big thing is that a lot of these patients who have lower GI bleeds oftentimes present asymptomatically. For your laboratory uh, findings, the biggest thing that you're going to want to get is your hemoglobin. Uh, also, ferritin and iron studies will be useful. To note and a kind of caveat to the hemoglobin is that within the first 24-48 hours of a GI bleed, your hemoglobin may be falsely normal and you won't notice that there is uh, an issue or uh, anemia until kind of resuscitation or later in the patient's course. So the thing to think about when you're addressing this in patients is your different etiologies for a lower GI bleed. Commonly, you're gonna see hemorrhoids, external versus internal. Uh, your internal are more likely to bleed. Uh, external are more generally painful, less likely to bleed. Anal fissures, you're also going to see diverticular bleeds. You're going to see mesenteric ischemia, ischemic colitis, infectious colitis, inflammatory bowel diseases, your autoimmune colitis diseases, and cancer. So in thinking about treatment for these patients, you want to first obtain good access, peripheral access to large bore IVs to be able to give fluids and blood products as needed. You'll want to type and cross these patients uh, and you'll want to call your gastroenterologist to see about further intervention. So in thinking about a lower GI bleed, you're going to want to pretty much jump to a colonoscopy to help make the diagnosis. The caveat here about doing a colonoscopy in the acute lower GI bleed is that oftentimes if you're having active bleeding, that doing a colonoscopy, you won't be able to visualize the bleed secondary to all the blood along the, uh, the colon. If this is so, if you have an active bleeding hemorrhage and that the patient is unstable or requiring pretty consistent transfusions, it would be important to contact interventional radiology for a CT angiogram and possible embolization. If the bleed is stopped though, uh, you would do a colonoscopy, prep the patients, uh, and then make the diagnosis and perhaps be able to treat or intervene at that time. If you still have a negative colonoscopy and you're having recurrent bleeding, the imaging that you could possibly use at that point is a red blood cell tag scan versus a CTA. 
The red blood cell tag scan is preferred still. Uh, it's more sensitive than a CTA and it's cheaper. If these are unavailable though, uh, CTA is very useful and it actually is more specific to localizing the source or site of bleeding. If at that point you still are having bleeding, are not able to localize it, you could consider a capsule study to look for the source of bleeding. And if you're still having bleeding, there's no imaging that's been positive, you could talk about talking to surgeons for angiogram versus open laparotomy to try and make the diagnosis. Once you determine the site or source of bleeding, then it will be up to you to determine how you're going to treat this. For your hemorrhoids, you would, make, you would do a physical exam, rule out any other issues. This is very simple. You avoid doing further imaging or procedures to these patients, and then you would treat them symptomatically. For your diverticular bleeds, if you have recurring bleeds, you may need to talk to surgery about doing a colectomy. For your mesenteric ischemia, this is an abnormal physical exam finding with pain of the abdomen out of proportion to presentation, and you would be discussing this with uh, your surgeons for definitive treatment. For your different type of colitis, either infection, uh, you would treat uh, the infectious causes, most common causes, Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, your uh, sometimes C. diff, and your E. coli. For IBD, at that point you would be talking to the gastroenterologists about steroids and further autoimmune disease treatments. And then for cancer treatments, you would be discussing again with your surgeons and oncologists for uh, definitive management. In summarizing and getting to the end of the discussion of lower GI bleeds, uh, three takeaway points that I would like you to try and remember from this discussion is first, you want to always do a digital rectal exam to rule out hemorrhoids and other sources of bleeding, whether this is hematochesia or melanoma. For the second point, I would like you to remember if you're going to do intervention, colonoscopy is the preferred, but if you have active ongoing bleeding, the colonoscopy will not be able to make the diagnosis and you may need to talk to interventional radiology. And for the third thing to remember is that if you have an active hemorrhaging bleed, then contacting interventional radiology for intervention and embolization uh, is the preferred option. Thank you very much, and this is Lower GI Bleeds. Thanks for listening and learning with us. If you would like more information on this topic, please take a look at our full-size Louisville Lectures, either on louisvillelectures.org, on our YouTube channel, or on our podcast.